役にも立てるとは不甲斐ない。The anime begins with a girl wandering in the forest, where she encounters a creature appearing to be a rabbit lying on the ground. The girl didn't know what kind of creature it was, but she decided to leave, not paying much attention. However, she discovered that the creature was hungry, so she offered it a carrot. The rabbit began eating, and the girl introduced herself as Sally, a former princess, though not anymore. She then asked the rabbit its name and if it was a monster. The rabbit named Frau replied that it was a hair folk. Later, Sally showed a picture of someone to Frau and asked if it had seen that person somewhere. However, Frau denied it. After thanking Frau for the food, Sally decided to leave and continue her journey. But Frau followed her and asked Sally to allow it to accompany her on her journey. Sally initially refused. But eventually agreed. After a while, Sally and Frau reached a small village. When Sally met a farmer, he welcomed her warmly but became uneasy and tense upon seeing Frau, realizing that she was a hair folk. He informed Sally that she needed to leave with him and distance herself, Frau M. Frau, because hair folk S were predatory creatures that had killed many humans, making them enemies of humanity. At this point, Strange memories surfaced in Sally's mind about someone she tried to catch up with, but who left her behind. Returning to the present, Sally decided to retreat and asked Frau to follow her away from the village. Subsequently, Sally decided to return once more and navigate through the village to reach her destination. She asked Frau to hide, and indeed, the two girls sneaked through the village. However, they was discovered by one of the men, who turned out to be the village leader. He couldn't recognize Frau and welcomed Sally, asking her to stay at his house for the night to rest Frau M. her journey. In the evening, Sally sat down for dinner with the village leader and spoke briefly with him. When he asked why her companion didn't join for dinner, she explained that her friend was tired from the journey and needed rest in her room. After dinner, the village leader accompanied Sally to her room, mentioning on the way that the village people hadn't welcomed travelers until recently, when a powerful boy traveler had helped them eliminate many hair folk monsters that attacked the village. Since then, the village decided to welcome any traveler. When Sally heard this, she became very happy because she realized that this boy traveler must be Makoto, the person she's been searching for. Afterwards, Sally asked the leader where the boy had gone, but unfortunately, he didn't have an answer to that question. She then asked why the villagers didn't welcome Hairfolk S, and he explained that Hairfolk S were enemies of humanity as they were savage. But Sally wasn't persuaded by this talk, as she believed hair folk Sess were gentle creatures like Frau. The next morning, Sally woke up to screams. A hair folk monster, a ghoul with tremendous strength, appeared. The villagers couldn't deal with it, and Sally stepped up to confront the monster. However, she freezes in place, feeling a sudden intense heat throughout her body. The monster was about to attack Sally. But luckily, Frau appeared out of nowhere and kicked the monster, defeating it with just one powerful kick. A moment of silence followed, astonishing everyone present with Frau's strength. At that moment, some knights were watching the scene. From a distance, Sally thanked Frau for saving her life. But the villagers were still in shock. Both due to Frau's strength and her unexpected actions, having saved a human. The leader requested the girls to leave the village, but Frau returned to thank him for the food and then left, leaving the leader bewildered. On their way, the girls encountered the knights who led them to the prison in the palace, belonging to the kingdom of Remedial. Later, one of the knights in the prison came to them, informing them that he was Hawthorne, the commander of the royal knights. Hawthorne apologized for their imprisonment, explaining that they were detained because Frau was a hair folk and appeared incredibly powerful. However, his opinion changed when he witnessed Frau defending Sally. 
he decided to release them and invited them for dinner at his expense, after Sally and Frau pretended to be famished. In the city, the team roamed, and Hawthorne bought food for Frau, while Sally immensely enjoyed the city's atmosphere. On the other side, two hair folk s appeared at the kingdom's gate, one named Siet, a powerful ghoul, and the other, a girl hair folk named Mickey. Mickey then destroyed half of the kingdom using her eye's power, astonishing Sally with this event. However, due to using her power, Mickey's size drastically decreased. But she assured Siet that she would return to her normal state after regaining her strength. Siet began attacking the knights, brutally killing them. When Sally saw him, she experienced a similar sense of shown and started moving towards him involuntarily, despite Hawthorne's attempts to stop her. Fortunately, Frau appeared once again out of nowhere and delivered a powerful blow to Siet. But unfortunately, that blow did not affect him. Sally regained consciousness and was urged by Hawthorne to leave. Frau stayed behind to fight Siet, telling Sally that she intended to kill him for trying to harm her. Siet found this situation hilariously amusing, as it was the first time he'd seen a hare folk defending a human. A fierce battle ensued between them, but Siet had the upper hand as he was stronger and was about to finish off Frau. However, at the right moment, Sally intervened, encouraging Frau not to give up. Frau then landed another powerful kick on Siet, but it seemed to have no effect. In the end, Siet prepared to finish off Frau and Sally with one blow because he believed it was over. However, Sally felt that same sensation again, but this time, she didn't resist and underwent a strange transformation, becoming stronger. She then delivered a simple strike to Siet, surprising him by disarming him. After that, we see Mickey sitting under a tree, waiting to regain her strength. However, she is surprised by the appearance of Makoto behind her and is astonished by his extraordinary power. He informs her that he saw what she did in the kingdom and tells her that he won't engage in a fight with her now until she regains her strength again to make the confrontation more entertaining. On the other side, the battle between Sally and the Goblin continues. The Goblin is surprised by Sally's formidable strength, effortlessly blocking its attacks. Returning to Mikoto and Mickey as Mickey regains her strength, she questions Mikoto about why he kills Goblin S. He responds by asking her the same question about humans, revealing that he kills Goblin S for the pleasure of it. Both of them start preparing for the upcoming fight. Meanwhile, on the other side, Set begins using his powerful cannon to defeat Sally. Mickey hears the powerful impact from a distance. Makoto takes advantage of the situation and delivers a strong blow, dividing her into two parts. However, she survives using her technique, the Sendo technique, which divides her power among multiple eyes to avoid death. Mickey questions Mikoto about leaving the castle's protection and yet fighting her. He confesses that he loves fighting goblins more than saving humans, making her feel more frightened. She requests reinforcements, but Mikoto eliminates her technique with a simple strike. On the other hand, Set feels regret for using his full power against Sally, who, despite a powerful cannon blast, retaliates and easily kills him. Sally regains consciousness but loses it again and collapses. Mikoto provokes Mickey to unleash her powerful attack, but it drains her energy without harming him. He then counterattacks, piercing her with a sword. His dog questions why he spared her, and Makoto explains that he wants her to suffer in the world of Goblin S and humans, now being half human and half goblin, devoid of any power. He asks about Sally inside the castle, but Makoto decides not to check on her and continues his journey, leaving the castle. On a distant side, someone stands and looks at the castle. Returning to Sally, she finds herself on a bed next to Fro, who explains the story and reveals that Sally defeated the goblin with a single strike. 
At that moment, Hawthorne enters the room, confirming Fro's story, arousing his curiosity after that. Hawthorne returned Sally's small sword to her. Later, Hawthorne requested Sally and Fro to accompany him. On the way, a soldier stopped Fro to thank both her and Sally for saving the castle from the goblin. Hawthorne informed them that the castle's inhabitants now welcome Sally and Fro as heroes who saved the castle and defeated the ferocious goblin. The team then reached the prison, and Sally assumed Hawthorne wanted to imprison her and Fro due to their powers. However, Hawthorne explained that he only wanted Sally to meet a new prisoner, who turned out to be Mickey. Hawthorne informed Sally that the soldiers found Mickey outside the castle, still breathing and alive. No one could guard her, as she was still powerful. Therefore, Hawthorne asked Sally and Fro to guard her, because they possessed extraordinary strength that no other soldier had, until the time of her execution. After Hawthorne left, it became clear that Mickey was not asleep. She attempted to attack Fro and escape, but failed due to her loss of strength. Sally then asked Mickey to tell her what happened, especially after hearing Mickey talking about Mikoto. Indeed, Mickey told Sally everything. Sally then asked Mickey not to tell anyone that she is a goblin and to lie to everyone, claiming to be just a human to avoid the death penalty. However, Mickey refused and preferred to die as a goblin than to live as a human. Sally then ordered Fro to break the prison door and told Mickey that they would escape together because she wouldn't leave anyone behind, even if they were goblins. In Hawthorne's office, Soldiers informed him that the prisoner had escaped, and unfortunately, Sally was the one who helped her. Hawthorne rushed to capture them, trying to convince them that they were involved in smuggling a goblin. However, Fro kicked a soldier from his horse, and another soldier returned the horse to Fro. They managed to escape. A very powerful and swift blow struck, demolishing the entire castle along with the body of that soldier, leaving everyone in a state of shock. Sometime later, Hawthorne is seen fighting in an arena and winning. He receives cheers from Mickey, Fro, and Sally. Sally then leaves the scene, and on the way, she asks Mickey about Hawthorne's reason for joining the fighting competition. Sally explains that he wants to earn money, especially since the winner receives 300 gold pieces. However, Fro disagrees, stating that Hawthorne is a noble man who only wants to become stronger and help humans because he has a big heart. Mickey is surprised to hear this, considering that she used to kill humans ruthlessly, thinking they had no hearts. Meanwhile, Sally sees Mikoto passing by and rushes to catch up with him. After searching for a while, she finds him and talks to him. As she drinks water beside him, the story flashes back to the first time Sally met Makoto when she had a meal at his expense. Afterward, Makoto decides to leave after revealing the bill, jokingly suggesting that if she wants to accompany him, she needs to find a job to cover her food expenses. And so... Melia decides to join the fighting competition to win the 300 gold pieces. She participates and wins several battles. On the other side, a soldier apologizes to a man named Sumergi, who reassures him that he witnessed the battle between Mikoto and Miki and knows that Mikoto wasn't his rival. While they converse, a little girl named Joserino, the Mask Queen, arrives. The soldier doesn't recognize her at first, but Sumergi informs him about her role in creating the goblin Somenki, whose head is all that remains. Later, everyone gathers at the summoning circle, where Summergi summons 100 of the strongest goblin S to celebrate the gathering of the 670 goblin S. Summergi then explains the Goblin S's situation in the world, mentioning that their numbers are decreasing due to Makoto, who single-handedly eliminated over half of the high-level goblins. He also reveals that Makoto is responsible for defeating Set, Joki, and Mickey. While Sumergi was speaking, 
A goblin named Todroki objected, stating that he would be the one to end Makoto, and there was no need for Sumergi to frighten the other goblinists with such news. However, Sumergi continued to elaborate on Makoto's strength, revealing that he was responsible for beheading Somenki, one of the powerful goblin s created by Yoserino. Sumergi also claimed to have killed Mickey, causing Todroki, who admired Mickey, to go mad. Todroki declared that he would personally take revenge on Mikoto, and he left the gathering. After the meeting, Jocerino transformed Somenki back to its natural form and offered her assistance to Sumergi in achieving his goal of creating a world where humans and goblin s could live peacefully. However, Sumergi's facial expressions remained sinister, not reflecting his supposed goal. The next day, Hawthorne was strolling in the city when he encountered Jocerino, who asked for his help in finding Sumergi. Despite not recognizing either of them, Hawthorne agreed to assist. During their journey, Jocerino introduced herself as the Mask Queen, expressing her fondness for accompanying humans. She promised to bring him wealth or power if he agreed to be her friend. However, Hawthorne emphasized the value of friendship over material gains, stating that trust and camaraderie were more important. Suddenly, Sumergi appeared and Jocerino ran toward him. She informed him that she was looking for him to witness how humans would coexist with Goblin S in peace. Sumergi, after learning about Hawthorne and realizing that he would participate in the fighting competition, asked Joserino to cheer for him in the arena. After Hawthorne left, Sumergi revealed that he knew about Hawthorne and had previously sent Somenki to destroy Hawthorne's kingdom. Now, Makoto was talking to the girl participating in the fighting competition, refusing to go and cheer for her due to being busy. In the arena, Hawthorne was engaged in a battle with one of the fighters, while Yoserino cheered for him from the stands. Outside the arena, Sally stood away from the crowd, surprised to see Sumergi behind her. He informed her that he knew her and invited her to join him in his quest to unite humans and goblin essies. Before Sally could comprehend the situation, Mikoto appeared, warning her not to approach Sumergi as he was one of the strongest goblins. Sumergi then introduced himself, affirming Makoto's statements and asking Sally to join him with her strength in creating a world where humans and goblins could live in peace. He also revealed that he had previously asked Makoto the same, but Makoto had refused. On the other hand, Makoto asked Sally to join him in fighting against the goblins and eliminating them all, leaving Sally in a perplexing situation. In a flashback, the story returned to the beginning, where goblins were at their peak strength, destroying villages and kingdoms without mercy. It also showed Princess Sally attempting to escape her guards to embark on an exploratory journey. She encountered Mikoto, who helped her hide from the guards. Later, Sally thanked Mikoto and invited him to the bakery as a token of gratitude. In the bakery, the seller warmly welcomed Princess Sally, urging her to stop trying to escape, especially with an impending marriage. However, Sally paid no heed and requested two coconut pastries. She rewarded Mikoto with one of them for assisting her. Mikoto enjoyed the pastry and thanked Sally. He observed that Princess Sally was very beloved by the kingdom's residents, showcasing her popularity. In the evening, Sally brought more delicious food to Mikoto as a thank you. She also asked him to tell her more about himself and his ongoing journey as a wanderer, expressing her desire for him to take her along. However, Mikoto informed her that the outside world is filled with monsters and goblins. Unlike her kingdom where people live safely and enjoy abundant delicious food, and they love her as their princess. This conversation did not sit well with Sally because she didn't want to live and die in the same kingdom without doing something new with her life. Therefore, Sally left the room feeling somewhat sad.
The next morning, Sally went to Makoto's room and as usual, she greeted all the guards and servants on her way. Upon entering Makoto's room, who was changing clothes, she was surprised to find him semi-naked, and the bigger surprise was realizing that he was a boy, not a girl. This led to an awkward situation. During a tour on the rooftop later, Sally asked him to accompany her on his journey, but he warned her about the dangers of the outside world, filled with monsters and goblins. He agreed to take her, but advised caution as he might have to leave her alone there. In the king's hall, a goblin arrived and demanded that the kingdom offer 30 humans every month as a sacrifice. Otherwise, the goblin threatened to unleash his army on the kingdom. The goblin left, leaving the queen and the guards in shock after witnessing his immense power. Later, as the goblin was leaving, he saw Makoto wandering in the kingdom with Sally. This made him curious, and he decided to approach but Makoto noticed and chased after him. Sally went to her father to inquire about the heightened guard presence, and her father gave her permission to embark on an exploratory journey, emphasizing the need to stay away from the kingdom due to the escalating danger. Meanwhile, a group of goblins, led by a powerful one named Sammy, approached the kingdom intending to attack. Sally had already reached Mikoto at the gate, witnessing him effortlessly severing the arm of Sammy, the goblin leader, with a single strike. Mikoto then defeated the remaining goblins. In shock and confusion, Sally tried to catch up with Mikoto, but fainted upon seeing the goblin corpses. The next morning, Sally decided to embark on her journey to explore the world. She sought her father's permission, and the king agreed without hesitation. Returning to the present time, a goblin, a vampire type, is seen killing a girl in the city at night. Horrified by the news, Sally requested that the group avoid that city, but Hawthorne insisted on staying, citing the need for rest and sleep in an inn. While wandering in the city, the group faced hostility from the residents due to their mixed human and female appearance. Sally, enraged, wanted to teach them a lesson, but Hawthorne restrained her. On the other hand, Mickey, upset with Sally for not taking action against the mistreatment, expressed her anger. Hawthorne decided to choose an inn for their stay, but warned that the innkeeper would refuse them if they saw Fro. Therefore, Fro had to sneak in at night. Initially reluctant, Sally eventually agreed, and Fro went to the market to buy some items accompanied by Mickey. At the market, Fro experienced mistreatment from a vendor who discriminated against her due to Mickey losing her goblin powers. During the sunset, Fro, with Mickey still upset, contemplated seeking revenge against the city residents and planned to meet a vampire in the city for help in avenging the mistreatment. She identified his location using her powers and met a vampire named Kayosuke, requesting his assistance in seeking revenge against the city residents who had caused her to lose her powers. Kiyosuke agreed to help, but he added that he would also eliminate Sally because of her immense power and the threat she posed. However, Mickey rejected that idea and argued with him. At that moment, Fro appeared out of nowhere, telling Mickey to leave while she dealt with the vampire. A battle ensued between Fro and Kiyosuke. On the other side, Sally was searching for Fro and Mickey in the city, starting to feel the danger surrounding them. She eventually reached their location, just as Kiyosuke used his powerful cannon-like fangs to explode Fro's entire body, leaving Sally and Mickey in shock. Sally retaliated with a powerful punch to Kyosuke. Despite his attempts to counter, her resilient body was unaffected by the goblin's strength. Kyosuke decided to immobilize Sally with his threads to finish her off. Just as he was about to do so, Mickey delivered a strong blow, surprising him. Mickey, revealing herself as a goblin, questioned Kyosuke's assumptions about Goblin S not saving humans and proceeded to strike him. In the heavenly realm, Fro spoke to an angel named Tala. Tala inquired about the reason for Fro's death once again, noting that this was her third death this year. 
Fro explained that she wanted to return to life and needed extra power to help her friends. Fro was resurrected with terrifying strength, easily defeating Kyosuke with a single blow to the astonishment of everyone. As Kyosuke was on the verge of death, he asked Miki to live her life better with humans. He shared his story of betraying the goblins long ago, living hidden among humans, falling in love with a girl, and tragically killing her when he couldn't control his goblin instincts. Miki bid farewell to Kyosuke, and she and Sally left the scene. In the morning, Fro woke up in the inn, finding herself on the bed next to the angel Tala. Fro initially believed she had died again, but Tala assured her that she was still in the world of the living. Sally, Mickey, and Hawthorne had taken care of her, bringing food, and Hawthorne stood guard near the door. Fro was overjoyed to learn that her friends had revived her once more. She asked Tala to restore her appearance to normal, and Tala complied. Tala assured Fro that she would stay by her side if she needed her. In the city, Sally and Mickey were heading to get some carrots for Fro. Mickey asked Sally about the reason for killing the goblin set, but Sally, angered, informed her that it was in self-defense and refused to apologize. They were interrupted by the previous carrot vendor, who continued to mock Fro. Unable to control her temper, Sally punched the man hard, causing him to fall to the ground in fear. The two girls continued on their way, and Mickey felt happy after Sally hit the merchant. However, Sally opposed her, saying she didn't intend to hit him, but she did it just for Fro. Still, Mickey remained happy that it happened. Back at the Angel Tala's place, she found the spirit of Kyosuke watching his burning body among the people. She asked him if he enjoyed watching his body like this. Kyosuke told her that he lived in this body for over 300 years and killed many with it, so he wasn't interested. However, he asked about Fro, her origin, and the reason for her strength. But his spirit began to fade before he could learn the truth and Tala returned him to the other world. The team sat with Fro, happily discussing how Sally hit the merchant. However, due to this, Hugh Thorne told them they needed to leave quickly before the army investigates and captures them. Sally was dragged outside to be punished for her reckless actions. Returning to the past, Mikoto was wandering in the forest at night with his dog when he discovered someone following him. To his surprise, it was a weak nun named Melia, who felt extreme fear of Mikoto. After Makoto prepared soup for them and reassured the girl, Melia revealed she was an amnesiac named Melia and didn't know what to do. Makoto asked her to accompany him for the night and during her sleep, Makoto went to kill her after learning she was a goblin. However, his dog objected, stating she's now a weak girl and it's not right to kill her. Makoto agreed to leave her and her fate to reach the next town. The next morning, a weak goblin attacked Melia, but Makoto easily defeated it. He informed her that they were approaching the city and would leave her there upon arrival. While they were talking, a medium goblin appeared, speaking to Melia as Hatsuki, revealing he had orders to capture her for betraying their leader, Joki. Melia remembered betraying Joki, the goblin leader, when she turned into a tree and fought Sally, losing her horn and powers. As Melia regained her memory, the medium goblin attacked her, causing her to lose a significant amount of blood. Interrupting, Mikoto declared that they needed to settle things quickly as he was busy and wanted to continue on his way after dealing with the winner among them. On the other side, Melia thought about a way to defeat the medium goblin after losing her powers. She decided to cut off the remaining part of her horn, turning completely human, and asked Mikoto to save her as a human and defeat the goblin before losing consciousness. The next morning, Melia woke up in a room, finding Makoto beside her. He told her he, indeed, saved her from the goblin who ran away in fear. Melia requested to accompany him on his journey, and Makoto agreed to this request. We go back to the past when the kingdom of Rimadol was destroyed, 
and Sumneki appeared after its destruction. He informed Mickey that he came after receiving a request for support from her. Then he scolded her for failing in her mission and allowing Seat to be killed by a human. Afterward, he decided that he would eliminate Mickey because she brought shame to the goblin with her weakness. However, Sally intervened and asked him to leave, threatening to kill him if he stayed. Unaware of how to use her powers again, Sumneki began to attack Sally. He was on the verge of killing her when an order came to stop and return from Sumerji. Sumneki left without harming any of them. Afterward, Sally rushed to Uthorn, who was mourning for the destruction of Rymadal. She tried to comfort him, and the team headed to the nearest town to find a place to stay. In the town, the residents looked at the team with fear and mockery, because Fro was with them, being a half-human. Even when Huthorn entered the hotel, the owner initially refused to let him and his company stay. However, Huthorn managed to convince the man, especially after revealing that he was a former commander of the Rye Metal Kingdom's army. In their room, Huthorn handed Sally his money pouch to get some food for them. Once Sally left the room, Huthorn broke down completely, crying over what had happened. Mickey wondered why he kept his composure in front of Sally. Huthorn explained that he didn't want to appear weak in front of Sally as she is a strong girl. Fro tried to calm Huthorn down, and eventually succeeded. After Huthorn left to get some water, Mickey asked Fro about her interaction with humans. Fro explained that she used to live a life of searching for food, escaping criminals, and facing the harsh treatment of humans. However, her perspective changed after meeting Sally, who treated her kindly. In the town, Sally wandered, contemplating what kind of food she could buy with the limited money. She sat down to rest, reflecting on how little she had changed from her princess persona. Fortunately, Makoto and his dog passed by, surprising Sally and bringing her great joy. Later, Makoto sat beside Sally, asking about her well-being and how she found the outside world. Sally shared her experiences, including the harsh discrimination from humans against half-humans and the intense hatred goblins harbored toward humans without apparent reason. Mikoto revealed that he hated Goblin S and sought to eliminate them all, influenced by the death of someone close to him. On the other side, in Sumergi, a soldier informed Sumergi that a child had baked cakes. Sumergi killed the child. And when questioned about who ordered him to stop killing Sally and Mickey, Sumergi mentioned that it was the first one who gave the order, alluding to a higher authority. Returning to the conversation between Sally and Makoto, Sally told Makoto that she found a purpose for her journey, creating an ideal world for both humans and goblin. She asked him to join her, but he refused, deciding to continue on his own path. In the town, Huthorn discovered that one of his soldiers was still alive and joined the team in the hotel room. When Sally returned, Huthorn informed her of what he learned from the soldier named Barrett. Barrett told him that before the kingdom was eradicated, he guarded the library until a sorceress appeared and transported him into the forest. Upon hearing Barrett's story, Sally decided to go and thank the sorceress who saved Barrett. In the forest at night, Mickey found Sumerji, and they spoke briefly about his surprising appearance. Sumerji offered to restore her powers and turn her into a strong goblin again, asking in return for information about Sally. Initially refusing, Mickey eventually agreed to spy on Sally to avoid Sumergi thinking she had betrayed the goblin S and joined the humans. On the other side, the team managed to reach the location of the sorceress, represented by a massive tree. Returning to the moment when Sally had to choose between joining Mikoto or Sumergi, she decided to join Mikoto. However, as soon as she did, Mikoto ran off, informing her that he didn't want her to be part of his journey, especially since it was filled with killing and hatred towards Goblin S 
Unlike Sally's goal of creating a world where humans and Goblin S coexist peacefully. While they were talking, a large explosion occurred in the town. It turned out that Todoroki, along with two powerful Goblin S, Shinki, and Basso, had arrived with the intention of finding and eliminating Mikoto. Shinki asked Todoroki about the child and suggested leaving him on the ground, ensuring that no one could harm him until they finished their fight. In the contestants' room, a soldier entered to inform them that the competition had been cancelled and they were offered a reward of 500 gold coins to fight the Goblin S in the city. Hewthorne rejected the idea, knowing the strength of the Goblin S. However, as he tried to leave, another contestant stopped him, expressing his desire to fight the Goblin S to bring more money to his family. Before he could finish his sentence, a lightning bolt struck him from the sky, ending his life. It was Todoroki's action who had appeared to eliminate Hugh Thorne, thinking he was Makoto. Mickey witnessed Hugh Thorne's impending death and rushed to save him. Meanwhile, Sally, standing alone, pondered her next move. Sumergi appeared behind her, explaining the goblin's goal of seeking revenge on Makoto and placing Huathorn in front of Todoroki. If she wanted to save him, she had to overcome Todoroki. On the other side, Makoto decided to leave, but found the child on the ground. Although he intended to kill the goblin child for the first time, Makoto felt dizzy and fell to the ground. Back to Mickey, who was running to make Shinky stop attacking and asked Fro to go save Huthorn. However, Basso attacked Fro on her way. Returning to Huthorn's battle, Todoroki regained consciousness and decided to take revenge on Huthorn. The two engaged in a fierce battle, with Huthorn determined not to surrender despite knowing his fate. Suddenly, Todoroki's attack was blocked by the sorceress who appeared out of nowhere, saving Huthorn. Now we go back to the past where a man named Hiko bid farewell to his adoptive parents, who raised him, to start his journey in search of his true parents. On his way, he encountered a talking dog for the first time, and they became friends. The dog decided to accompany him on his journey. One day, as Hiko and the dog sat together discussing his unknown parents, they witnessed a village being attacked by a goblin. Hiko decided to investigate, and upon seeing the goblin devouring humans, he was initially paralyzed by shock. However, he chose not to surrender or abandon the villagers, and despite trembling, he stood against the goblin. To everyone's surprise, including the dog, Hiko's immense strength became evident as he defeated the goblin with a single blow. As time passed, Hiko became the hero of all the villages, saving humanity from Goblin S. After ridding most villages of Goblin S, he decided to go to the Goblin S's stronghold on their island to eliminate their leader. During his journey, Hiko apologized to the dog for bringing him along on a path filled with killing and Goblin S. However, the dog assured him that there was no need for apologies, as it had chosen to accompany Hiko from the beginning without any conditions. After that, Hiko managed to eliminate all the island's ghouls until he reached their leader. After a fierce battle between them, Hiko succeeded in defeating the leader, who informed him that he would spare him and let him live his life in exchange for not allowing any ghouls to return to those villages again. The leader agreed to this, but he told Hiko that his departure would summon the Galan elders for an investigation, the Kishin. However, Hiko did not care about that. After liberating most of the villages, Hiko decided to halt his search for his true parents and stay in a house he built in the middle of the forest, awaiting the arrival of the Kishin, the high-ranking Goblin S, for an investigation. Even though the dog assured him that it didn't matter and that he was already his family, signs of loneliness began to appear on Hiko's face over time. One night, a goblin, somewhat resembling a human, arrived at Hiko's house. Hiko was surprised by his appearance and was initially about to kill him. However, the goblin told Hiko that he had lived a long life with humans and asked for Hiko to end him as compensation for his past actions. So, he asked Hiko to kill him now as compensation for what he had done. When Hiko asked about the fate of his son, the goblin informed him that he had left the child with some relatives to take care of him. Hiko then executed the goblin. 
The next morning, Kiko prepared to go to the city to find the child and check on his well-being. On his way, he found the child, but the townspeople had tied him to a tree and were beating him, considering him a young goblin. Hiko quickly rescued the child and questioned the people about their actions. They explained that Goblin S had killed their relatives and friends, but Hiko insisted that the child was under his protection, and no one should harm him. In the night, Hiko took the child to his house, revealing to him that he had killed his father. He asked the child to seek revenge for his father's death by killing Hiko. He even handed the child his sword. The child, overwhelmed with emotions, attempted to strike Hiko but lacked the strength. Hiko then told him that he would take care of him, teach him to fight, and make him stronger so that he could eventually seek revenge. After the child fell asleep, Hiko was asked by the dog why he didn't tell the child the truth, that his father had asked Hiko to kill him. Hiko replied that what happened to the child was a terrible ordeal. As his mother disappeared, his father was killed, and people treated him harshly because he was a ghoul. As a result, the child lost any meaning or purpose in life. That's why Hiko felt it was his responsibility to care for him until he became strong enough to determine his own destiny. Fortunately, the child was still awake and overheard this conversation. As days passed, Hiko educated the child in archery, reading, hunting, and fire-making. During a bath, Hiko asked the child for his name, but he refused to reveal it, considering it a bad name. Hiko then offered to give him a new name, and he chose the name Momotaro. Their bond grew stronger, akin to that of brothers, alleviating the loneliness that had haunted Hiko. The promised day arrived when the goblins, accompanied by the Kishin, gathered again to eliminate Hiko. On the other hand, Hiko asked Momotaro once again to fulfill his promise and seek revenge for his father. However, Momotaro refused, and when questioned by the dog, Hiko revealed that the Kishin had already arrived. Hiko then approached Momotaro, sat beside him on the hill, and encouraged him to live a happy life, make friends, and find pure-hearted humans who would accept him as a goblin. He promised to protect Momotaro until he could decide his own fate. Before sleeping, Hiko asked Momotaro to smile in the face of challenges. On another day, Momotaro rushed to a place he felt uneasy about, but the dog stopped him. Ignoring the dog's warning, Momotaro proceeded, only to find Hiko defeated in battle against the Kishin leader. Despite being on the brink of death, Hiko didn't give up. He attempted to fight even without his limbs, but it proved futile. As Momotaro reached him, Hiko took his last breath, satisfied with the life he had lived. He asked Momotaro to live a better life and avenge him, transferring the spark of his strength to the child. On the other side, the Kishin leader prepared for the final blow. However, Momotaro, unaffected by the powerful strike, retaliated and defeated the Kishin leader in a single strike. He vowed to eliminate all goblins in the world and adopted the name Momotaro Mikoto. Returning to the present, Melia carried Makoto on her back while walking through the city, accompanied by the dog, who informed her that Makoto likely had disturbing dreams during his sleep. Now we return to the battle between Hwathron and Todoroki, with Hwathron on the verge of death. However, the sorceress Winnie saved him. When Todoroki asked her if she was here to fight with him, she denied it and told him that she came only to give Hwathron his magical sword. Hwathron was surprised by this. Afterward, Winnie gave him the magical sword and told him that she is happy to see him again, as she hadn't seen him in a long time. She also informed him that this magical sword can cut through anything, from goblins' bodies to lightning or anything else. But it must be used wisely, as it once belonged to Fro, from the celestial beings. Before explaining Fro there, Winnie stepped back from the battlefield, leaving the matter to Hwathron to continue the fight. In another battle, we see Basso managing to eliminate most of the area where Fro was. He thought he had succeeded in defeating Fro, but fortunately, Fro is still alive. After recalling part of her past, Fro began to regain some strength. With this regained power, she cut off Basso's wing with a single strike, and then she easily ended his life by swiftly beheading him. Afterward, Fro decided to head to Hwathron's location to rescue him, 
but she lost consciousness before doing so. Meanwhile, in the battle between Mickey and Shinky, Mickey continued to suffer from Shinky's consecutive strikes. To outsmart Shinky, Mickey lured him to the kingdom's wall, making him extend his arm to eliminate her. She trapped him in her trap and then delivered a powerful blow that finally finished him. On the other side, Sally couldn't use her powers against Sumergi, but she didn't give up. She told him that she would save her friends no matter what, even without her powers. After hearing this, Sumergi surrendered and decided not to continue the fight with her. He allowed her to go and save her friends. Sally was surprised by this and asked Sumergi to stop mocking her. He explained that he was not willing to risk entering a real battle with her, as he just wanted to know her intentions and determination. In the end, he wanted to create a world where humans and goblins could live together in peace. Before leaving, Sally thanked Sumergi and told him that she would return to him. This time, she would ask him to join them in building this peaceful world. As for Hwathron, he had managed to deflect some of Todoroki's attacks, making Todoroki even angrier. While Todoroki was in this state, Mickey remembered how she treated him kindly in the past when he was shunned by all goblins. Todoroki then summoned his powerful cannon again to finally finish off Hwathron. Mickey felt sadness for Shinki after defeating him. He admitted that he wanted to kill her because if she remained alive, she would distance Todoroki from him. He couldn't bear that to happen because Todoroki was the only goblin who treated him kindly, especially when Shinki was shunned by both humans and goblins due to his ugly appearance. Mickey wished for a happy life for herself and departed from life. Todoroki, on the other hand, unleashed a powerful attack on Hwathron with all his might in a single blow. Fortunately, Hwathron managed to deflect that attack and delivered a stronger blow with his sword, ultimately defeating Todoroki. The next day, Todoroki woke up to find Mickey beside him. He initially thought she had died, but Mickey reassured him that she was still alive, and they were both overjoyed. Meanwhile, Sally was discussing with Hwathron and Winnie about Todoroki. She informed them that initially, Todoroki didn't want to kill Hwathron, but he thought he was fighting Makoto. Todoroki didn't leave room for Hwathron to explain the situation, leading to their battle. Fortunately, Todoroki hadn't died from Hwathron's last strike, as he was weakened. This was all due to Todoroki's intention to kill the innocent contestant. This led to a dispute between Sally and Todoroki, as she confronted him about expressing his evil intentions in that way. So, Winnie suggested that they head to the kingdom of Jedia in the north, where there is no discrimination against half-humans. On the other side, Miku finally woke up in the hotel room. Milia entered, and Miku was about to eliminate her, but the dog stopped him. He regained consciousness again, and Milia explained that he had fallen asleep due to the dynamic's power, which forced anyone approaching him to sleep. After bidding farewell to the sorceress Winnie, everyone left the place. Sally asked Todoroki what he would do next and invited him to join them since he seemed to be a peaceful goblin who would love a world where humans and goblins could coexist peacefully. Initially, Todoroki refused, but after learning that Sumergi had deceived him about Mickey's death, he agreed. Todoroki decided to build this world in his own way, then said goodbye to Mickey and the others and left. However, his thoughts began to change toward humans, but at the gate Sumergi was waiting for him, and suddenly he attacked Todoroki, rebuking him for lying about Mickey's death, which led to the deaths of Shinki and Basso. Without warning, Sumergi eliminated Todoroki. The group arrived at the location of the sorceress Winnie and entered the peculiar-looking house. To their surprise, Winnie appeared behind them and informed them that she knew them all because she had been monitoring them through her magical card. Sally then requested Winnie to teach her magic, but Hwathron interrupted and asked Winnie why she saved Parrot, his private soldier. Winnie explained that she sensed danger before the attack on the Remedial Kingdom, so she transported herself and Parrot. Sally insisted on learning magic, and Winnie agreed but set three conditions. Sally should not tell anyone about her location, obey all her orders, and pay one million gold pieces for the magic lessons. Sally asked Hwathron for the money, but he explained that he didn't have that much and the money he had was just enough to keep them alive during their journey. After losing hope, Sally asked Huathron to teach her combat at least, as she believed she was weak 
and lacked the strength of Fro or Winnie. In the morning of the next day, Quathrun began teaching Sally how to fight. While Mickey watched, she remembered Sumergi's advice about looking inside her friends. To her surprise, Sally exhibited a tremendous amount of power. Winnie then decided that the team would spend the night at her house, and in return, someone had to clean the old room in the house. Parrot volunteered for the task. Everyone entered the house, but Winnie asked Huathron to wait as she wanted to show him something. Sally's true strength when she fought with the goblin seeth and key. In the evening, Fro met Winnie and asked her about the past three years. Winnie mentioned that she didn't know why Fro abandoned her powers and took on the appearance of the rabbit tribe. Fro ignored the conversation, but Winnie informed her that she had crafted a new hammer for her. Fro was delighted, and then Winnie suggested that she teach Sally magic. She agreed to teach Sally, but with three conditions. Sally shouldn't disclose her location, obey all her commands, and pay one million gold pieces. Fro told Winnie that she could pay the amount later. The next day, Sally was excited to hear the news, and Winnie started teaching her magic. However, Sally had to strengthen her body first, so she went to train with Fro on running. When she returned, Huathron began training with her in combat. Sally struggled, and Huathron eventually kicked her, making her fall to the ground, but he was laughing. Meanwhile, Winnie was watching them, and recalled Huathron helping her in the distant past. At that moment, the leaders of the lizard and genie armies appeared out of nowhere. The team was surprised, especially since their people had been in battles and wars for a long time. The lizard leader explained that they came to ask Winnie to lift the seal on the forest goblin. Inside, the leaders began discussing with Winnie about the forest goblin, which prevented their people from farming and caused the sky not to rain for a long time. Winnie agreed to lift the seal, but on the condition that the entire team would accompany her. The next day, Winnie was in the forest working on breaking the seal on the goblin and Sally couldn't understand the connection between Winnie and the goblin. The lizard leader explained that the goblin posed a threat to their people, especially after hearing about what happened to the Remedal Kingdom. Therefore, they had to preemptively eliminate the goblin before it attacked them. After hearing this, Sally was glad to witness the determination of this non-human leader to protect his people, even though she found it odd. On the other hand, Huathron was talking to the other leader, and while reviewing the military arrangements, he discovered that this leader was planning to betray the lizard people after the battle. Sally was disappointed by the leader's evil intentions, but as they continued talking, Milia suddenly appeared out of nowhere and threatened to kill them all. But she was surprised to find Mickey among humans and told her the reason. Did Mickey betray the goblin-s and join humans? However, Sally replied, saying that Mickey lost his power as a goblin, so she is forced to follow them until she regains her strength. But the answer didn't make much difference to Malaya because she told them that she would kill everyone, including Mickey, due to Samurgi's orders. Indeed, Malaya started attacking them, but Fro managed to block her first strike. On the other side, Winnie was thinking, analyzing the situation, and wondering why that goblin appeared at that time. Could it be that Milea unsealed the forest goblin and set it free? But her thoughts were interrupted by a powerful tremor caused by the forest goblin, who appeared in the form of a huge tree, known as Goblin Jokey. The leader decided to withdraw the army, but the lizard leader refused and asked him to stay and fight. However, Winnie supported his decision and asked everyone to escape while she provided them with some time. From a distance, Somki stood and watched what was happening with Samurgi, and Samki asked him why he planned all of this. Samurgi told him that he wanted to measure Sally's strength only, and that he received orders from the High Council. At that moment, Makoto passed by them, and for the first time, both of them met. Samki thought that Makoto was just a weak girl, so he ran towards her to eliminate her. However, he lost his head in an instant due to Makoto's attack. This shocked Samurgi, and Makoto introduced himself, telling him that he is Mamoru, the Goblin Hunter. In the battlefield, Hewthorne planned to eliminate the Tree Goblin. He requested everyone to unite and formulated a plan. The leader's army would distract Jokey, and Hewthorne would use Sally as bait to lure Malaya away and deal with her along with Fro. This would give Winnie the time to seal the Forest Goblin again. 
However, amid all these events, Sally surprised everyone with a request that everyone stops fighting and unites. The request shocked everyone, and when Jokey heard it, he grabbed Sally and brought her to him, telling her that she is just a weak human who knows nothing. Goblin S, he claimed, are made of human hatred, so how could they unite? Fro tried to save Sally, but Malaya stood in her way. On the other side, Mikoto continued talking to Samergi, surprised that Samaki was still alive after having his head cut off. Samergi told him that he's a puppet and can live even after beheading. Samergi then asked Makoto to stop the fight, but he refused and attacked him. However, it was futile, and Makoto was surprised by Samergi's strength. Samergi told him that he doesn't like fighting. He prefers making deals, including a deal for coexistence between humans and goblin-s in peace. Back to Sally, angered by Jokey's words, she activated her power and easily broke free from her restraints. Winnie asked if she was okay, and Sally replied that she felt a change in her body, but remained in control of the power she possessed. When she looked at Malaya, she wanted to eliminate her as a goblin, but she managed to control her power. Jokey then told her that she didn't need to hide that desire and explained that her power was an anti-goblin force created to eliminate all goblins. So if Sally truly wants to create a world where humans and goblins live in peace, she must kill herself first as she poses a threat to goblins. Winnie thought that Sally believed Jokey's words, so she asked her not to listen to him. However, Sally reassured her and told Jokey that she would use that power to create peace in the world, even if it meant having to eliminate some goblins. She remembered her promise to Makoto and all the experiences she went through with her companions on her long journey. However, Milea surprised her with a vicious attack but Sally easily cut her hair and then delivered a powerful punch. Jokey continues his speech, telling Sally that he knows she enjoys killing goblins, just as he enjoys killing humans because of their savage nature. He then asked her to kill Malaya, as she was of no use to him, and being a weak goblin angered him. Jokey directed a decisive blow at Malaya, but Sally managed to deflect it and save her. After that, Sally felt extreme fatigue due to using her power. The leaders thanked her because she was the reason they were saved from death. At that moment, Huthorn discovered that Malaya had managed to escape. In the evening, everyone celebrated their victory, but Mickey was in his room, sending information to Samurgi about Sally. Samurgi informed her that he had reached an agreement with the goblin hunter Makoto regarding Sally. On the other side, in the forest, we see Makoto sitting with the dog, asking why he trusted that goblin Samurgi. Makoto told him that he trusted Sally's strength and never trusted Samurgi. In the morning, Sally woke up, and when she went downstairs, she found Huthorn sitting and talking with the leaders, making her feel relieved by this peaceful scene. However, Winnie appeared behind her and asked her to get ready to leave, because wherever they go, goblin s come causing trouble. Moreover, someone seems to know about her power and sends these goblin s to test her strength. But Hugh Thorne interrupted her and told her that she won't go anywhere without him. He would accompany her on her journey until the end, and Fro confirmed his decision. Mickey also decided to join them, but Winnie refused, stating that she doesn't belong anywhere but would welcome them and offer help whenever they needed it. The team prepared for a new journey and set off for another adventure to discover the secret of Sally's power and create a world where humans and goblins can live in peace.